Welcome to the series Writing for Games. In this video, I'm going to discuss interactive dialogue. We create dialogue for two purposes, communication between characters and informing players. Remember, when we're writing dialogue for games, it's often like writing dialogue for the stage, for a play, or for a musical. Not only are characters communicating, as might happen within a novel or a short story, but we're also simultaneously informing the audience, players in the case of video games, about what's going on within the world and within the story. Dialogue in games is often presented in boxes. We often simply call them dialogue boxes. And these appear within the bottom third of the screen, but sometimes the middle of the screen as well. When we're talking about interactive dialogue, we're describing the presentation of different options to a player. They can interact with the dialogue and influence the story or character progression. We often present interactive dialogue in a metaphor of trees. So you might hear the phrase dialogue trees to describe interactive dialogue in its effect on the game itself. That is, depending on what the player chooses, paths branch, in the tree metaphor, out based on the choices of the player. So, for example, given the choice, do you want to know more, and two different yes or no options, then depending on what the player chooses, the game may change. The character or story progression may be different depending on the outcome of the player's choice. While not the first game with interactive dialogue, Dragon's Lair is often pointed to as an important early example. So while players do not necessarily choose dialogue options, the game does arrange scenes and the player can choose, based on the input, either correct or incorrect, that then affects the story. So the story branches based on player input, and it's one of the first games, or for one of the first notable games to do this. We can often see this in action-oriented games like the Dark Souls series. These often contain limited interactive dialogue, generally presented through menus, as seen here. And players can influence endings, depending on what covenant they take within the Dark Souls series, and also the relationships between factions within the world. So as we're talking about interactive dialogue, there are a number of useful patterns to help beginners get used to writing interactive dialogue. The first of which is we can always assume there will be some number of players who do not want to read anything within the game. Now, generally, if we're creating a more story or narrative-heavy game, a large number of players will probably want to read every word and they're interested in the story. But there will be some part of the audience who doesn't want to do that. And so often, crafting the first or the default option as the fastest way through the conversation or interaction is generally a good pattern to get into. This allows somebody who wants to keep clicking or pressing buttons to progress through the conversation without having to worry about it. You can think of this as kind of the skip option for those who don't want to necessarily engage as much with the story. For those who do want to engage with the story, unless the choice is binary, yes or no, right or left, consider an odd number of responses. So often generally three or five. This creates a range of possibilities. This allows players who may want to roleplay within the world as their character to choose the best reaction for them while also supporting the characters who don't necessarily want to read anything, the first part and the second part there, and generally a third to allow characters to choose between things. So as we're thinking about different types of options, let's look at a general template. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule, but this can help people when they're first getting started to think through the kinds of responses that might appear as part of interactive dialogue. These include, as previously discussed, generally the fastest, so the first or the default option. Agreement or disagreement. Generally, there will be some part of the audience who wants something to go a little faster. So putting the options of agreement or disagreement towards the top might speed up that interaction for them. Allowing players acting as characters to ask questions is always a good idea, especially anticipating situations where a player might be confused and allowing a character to ask those questions, as well as having serious or silly responses. Many role-playing games, sometimes more serious role-playing games, often include very silly responses, and this allows a player to get a laugh out of doing something within a serious world in a silly way. Again, depending on the point of view of the game, how serious it is, there may not be a case for silly, but it's always a good idea to just consider it. 
So this is a useful pattern, not a hard and fast rule. And especially those getting started can start to think through how many they want to support. Notice, of course, there are five options here. And again, odd numbers are a good pattern, not a hard and fast rule to get into to start to allow a player to think about how they want to react within these dialogue or interaction moments. So let's look at an example. Barter's Gate 3 does a really excellent job of anticipating where players might be confused and allowing them to ask questions posed as in-game questions from the character themselves. So in this example, what's the matter and who are you exactly are similar, but what's the matter will progress the story faster. It's the first or the default choice. But we can also ask questions about what's going on within the world or what's going on in the particular context. This allows people who want a little more information to do that as well. Notice that within this is also leave at the very bottom, choice five. So we can also leave the conversation if we want to engage in other systems. But depending on the game, there might not be other systems. So we always have that option. Notice there's an odd number. In fact, if you play a lot of Bar Baldur's Gate 3, you will notice that most, most interactions generally have odd numbers three or five, sometimes many more. And this again allows a range of different responses. So to kind of sum up what we've been talking about in this video, interactive dialogue describes a presentation of options to a player. They can interact with the dialogue to influence story or character progression. We often find this in lots of different games. Role-playing games tend to have it more than other games, but we also find it in action-oriented series like Dark Souls and Elden Ring and others. As we're thinking about designing interactive dialogue for writing for games, there are a number of different useful patterns we can talk about. We can generally assume that we'll be some part of the audience who doesn't want to read anything despite playing a kind of story or narrative heavy game. So providing the first or the default choice to progress the interaction or conversation faster is just a good idea to get into. Unless the choice is binary, left, right, yes, no, Providing an odd number of responses can give us a range of different things that a player might choose to, again, progress story or narrative. Thinking about useful patterns we get into, doing the fastest agreement or disagreement, questioning, serious or silly, is a good general pattern to start thinking through how we want to shape responses. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it is a good general template, especially, especially for those who are first writing for games, and start to think how they want to shape different interactions. So as part of all of this, as we're writing interactive dialogue, remember we're writing for two audiences. Not only are characters having a conversation, they're communicating, but we're also informing the player. So shaping how we create those interactive options can help us in allowing a connection between what the player knows and what the character knows, and especially in the Baldur's Gate 3 example, tying those together so that the player is never quite confused about the options provided for their character within the context of the game. They're acting as a character within a world with the knowledge they have as a player, and the better we can kind of match all those together, the better the overall experience. Thanks for watching.